we live with an urge, a deep urge, for a place of belonging, a place where we matter, a place where we are recognised, valuable, known fully as we are with no need for us to pretend, and yet we are still loved for it, surely a mirror of the love that Christ has for us. We don't have to pretend with Jesus, thank goodness, thank goodness all we are will be proclaimed from the rooftops, ah, for we cannot go into the kingdom of heaven with secrets, with pretense, but only as we are, and only mercy makes it possible. Now the longing for a community can come from the inward, half-hidden self, where if your own identity is in turmoil, then you can gain that sense of identity through the shared belonging of the group. But of course, that does not subsume or sublimate for a moment the anguish of an individual soul. And what is in the heart, of course, bubbles up and overspills from the heart as anger or hurtful comments. And particularly when we're young, and I was a young adult, and I remember that in we in community, in the lay community I belong to, can often try and learn the skills for future life, for some of my colleagues, for future married covenanted life. And many marriages are the fruit of time spent in lay communities. For celibate communities, where celibacy is part of the charism, it is always the relearning of life, is still the learning of a different type of covenanted relationship. I am called to live under Christ, under my abbot, in this community and I pledge to you that I am your brother no matter what cost that will entail or what daily cost. Now the meaning of many communities is the radical adventure of love rooted outside the broken, broken longings of the world. St Francis whose footsteps, footsteps still swirl in the Umbrian dust stripped himself naked. The spiritual meaning of that being the essence of community life. Because if you think you'll go into community life without being stripped naked and seen as you are, and in that sense mirroring the future eternal life of the kingdom, then you'll be surprised by love. Now he, St Francis went to, on to rebuild a shattered church building and irritates <laughs> and fascinates us all with his vision of community. One of the anecdotes that floats around the European skull is him testing a putative monk by telling him that to plant vegetables upside down and the would-be monk stubbornly refused whereupon the saint told him he may be a good gardener but he'd be a terrible monk. So what does community mean? Does it mean infantilism? As the walking wounded sometimes imagine it means, or even hope it does, to nurture them uh, where they don't have to make any effort back. The, does it mean the disappearance of the self in a shared and rigid identity? Yet obedience in love is a very different way of living from what is now expected of us. Where in attempting to create mature and credible self-realisation, the danger is we walk down the very wide way of egotism. Yet nothing is more of an anathema to us than disappearing within the more, more of a shared belonging. So it is 
that many communities with medieval emphasis on the loss of self as key to spiritual progress have fallen. And they disappeared themselves, their their cloisters demolished or turned into luxury flats or hotels, become palaces of pleasure and isolation from the cry of the world. So obedience and love is to live as if we are obedient to the call from each other, in the simplest sense, from the practical day-to-day tasks to the call that comes from the most vulnerable, to stay with them, not to abandon them, but to stay with them, to be faithful to each other, to be faithful to the call of the despised or the abandoned, to remain in God's love, however narrow the way, even to the point of sometimes being hard to breathe. 